Good morning. Over the next few minutes, I want you to consider your community's rehab space, and particularly the outdoor spaces you have set aside for therapy. Are they amenities? Is it a place you yourself want to go if you didn't have to? Well, let's look at what the trends are showing for the three generations that are in our uh, continuum of care, from the uh, from the silence down to the boomers, each one brings their own specific requests and tastes and desires to the table. But one thing that's a common denominator is a growing interest in expanded rehab and physical therapy spaces. And we see this is a, has a huge impact on our industry, uh, not just in the dollars, but as you can see, it's a, it's a $1 trillion industry because our society is built around managing sickness, not necessarily maintaining health. So how does that play into the boomer generation that is rejecting the medical model and going for lifestyle. Well, as you can see, the trends are showing that it's going to be a continued issue where physical therapists are going to be needed at an increasing rate every year over the next 5, 10, 15 years. It's not going away. So if physical therapy is something that's essential to our communities, let's take a, a page from Truett's book and say, if it's essential, let's make it good. Well, let's not make it just good, let's make it exceptional. Let's make it what it really can be. So we're seeing that several operators now have transformed their rehab spaces into high-end, luxurious, spa-like environments that look nothing like the medical model. Well, why shouldn't our outdoor spaces reflect this as well? Why can't we have that same treatment outdoors? One way we do that is through biophilic design. And biophilia is the theory that all human beings have an innate connection to nature, to plants, animals, and we find healing, calm, and comfort in those outdoor spaces, just being connected. So some components of that, well, why not make your garden, why not make your th outdoor therapy space a destination, something that draws people to it, well, make people really want to go there. And the use of water is, is just one example of an element to include there. People want to get close to it, feel it, touch it. And while they're out there, they want to have areas to socialize, places where maybe they can share victories of, of things that they accomplished in therapy that day, or just simply commiserate about uh, how, how rough therapy was that day, or, or just to talk about anything at all. Well, on the flip side, we also want to provide spaces for quiet reflection, where residents can get away with their thoughts, maybe mentally prepare themselves for what's coming tomorrow, uh, reflect on what they learned and what, they're, what they need to learn to, to do tomorrow. So let's say you have this great outdoor space, uh, but your resident just is physically unable to visit. They can't go outside or there's inclement weather. Well, studies show that just having a view to an outdoor space such as this will has the same effect mentally and physically to their overall well-being. And of course, we also need to provide spaces for the activity itself, whether it's group activities such as gardening, or maybe it's one-on-one -on -one with a horticultural therapist to do things that are really therapeutic but don't feel like they're actually going through the motions of therapy. And above all, we want to make sure we provide these residents a place where they can feel like they're in control of their surroundings. They don't want to be out away from the doors where they feel like they may, have, they may fall or may get lost, may not be able to find their way back. They want to feel like they're in control of their space. So you can see it's, there's a lot more to it. It's not just placing some equipment outdoors uh, with a nice view. There's a science to it. There's an intentionality. And it takes close collaboration with your therapy staff, landscape architects, and your entire design team. So in concept, we may take an element such as a kitchen where occupational therapy may take place indoors. If you place a kitchen outdoors and do that same type of therapy, maybe the resident doesn't realize they're actually going through therapy. It, it's fun. It's something they want to do. They want to be outside. And maybe it's something like differing walking services where they can test their gait and their stride as they move from paved services to landscape services. Now this community uh, in Richmond has a garden that incorporates many of these elements. This garden in particular is a memory garden and it's surrounded by three households uh, of residents, each one with its own private outdoor space. It's like their own backyard garden where they're out, they're free to go and use that at any time. And in the center, there's a larger garden with walking trails, maybe when their uh, family comes to visit or maybe they have group planned activities uh, with a gazebo structure for socialization and also a water feature that they can gather to. Well, let's say your uh, community, maybe you're not comfortable having actual water in that outdoor space for your residents. There's ways to simulate that and give that same feel uh, and also 
uh, let your residents enjoy that feature as well. So just to sum up, there are several things that we can do. We can recognize the, the trends that are coming, plan early on and get your design team involved early on and, and let's make a garden that's a destination, not an afterthought and make it practical, attractive and an environment that creates experiences. Thank you.